radar coordinates to base Orion. Compare figures with signal direction. Angle Alpha 37. Angle Alpha 12, velocity 600 miles per second. Signals in direction course. Power signals constant. Exact coordinates, signal exact direction. Course confirmed. Check the distance of the stellar explosion. Check the computer. There is no constellation in visual distance. No stellar explosion. Ask the new coordinates to escape the rays of that explosion. Information requested on explosion is not existent. No change of course necessary. There's something wrong with it. It's the end. All directions constant. Repeat. All directions constant.
it, Miller. Repeat. I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Repeat. You're inside. There's no doubt about it, and that punch of his proves it. In the report, I charge Captain Hamilton with insubordination. So you think the facts have been altered? I've never received an order from Miller. I've never even seen a report from Miller. All I have ever seen is a bunch of notes from an electronic hunk of metal. Now, I'm not in the habit of taking orders from a machine. It was an insult, sir, and he deserved it. But he's talking about the greatest brain ever made by man. Exactly. By man. The case now is in my jurisdiction. You should have contacted Hamilton personally. Perhaps a conference with Captain Hamilton would have been the proper procedure. It might have prevented this embarrassing situation. As for Hamilton, I assure you he will be justly disciplined. But if this incident became public, it could discredit Orion. Captain Hamilton certainly will be disciplined. You can go now, Miller. Commander, I'm silent. You're a barbarian, a savage. They warned me when they transferred you under my orders, but the warning wasn't necessary. Your arrogance was well known in advance. We knew all about it. Continue, Captain, and in just one month's time, I'll transfer you to the quartermaster service. <laughs> Not a rosy prospect, Commander. I should consult Wiz for what happened so that he would give. Eliminate dangerous personnel. I won't consult Wiz. I'm putting you in command of the spaceship, leaving for the Vega sector. Well, Mac. Now that I'm going outside, I'll try to find a good bottle of whiskey for you. <laughs> good idea, as long as it's scotch. <laughs> no problem. There you are. <clears throat> this is the airlock chamber to bridge. Segura's ready for instrument test. All set. <laughs> Enter the decompression chamber. Maximum duration, 10 seconds. Repeat, 10 seconds. Clear the area. It's an old satellite for the interception of gamma rays. It's practically a monument. <laughs> you know that thing must be a hundred years old. Telecameras three and four working. Activate radio contact with the outside. Why in the hell did you send only one man out there? 
Well, I thought, Captain, I... Uh... Come in, Peter. Peter, can you hear me? Very well, Captain. It's too hazardous to work alone. Re-enter the ship immediately. We'll prepare another crew member to go with you. The orders are that outside we work in pairs. Don't worry, Captain. I'll be extremely careful. Captain, look at screen number two. Stop it, Segura. That's an order. If that battery breaks, the acid will destroy your spacesuit. I know what I'm doing, Captain. It'll only take a few seconds. I've located it. I've got the breaker in already. He could die out there. He's liable to be... Take long at all, Captain. I've got to screw this in. It won't take a moment. Peter. You're a... You're a damn fool. to get back to the ship. Use the directional. And above all, stay calm. You've got three minutes before the suit will corrode. You have two and a half minutes. Speed, they won't make it. Look, Mila, what's going on? What are they stopping for? Thank <laughs> you. 
Barry, stand by with the regenerator. Oko, are you sure this spaceship's in the orbit of the satellite's passage? Not I, but he seems very sure. Here it is. The satellite has entered our screen. Give me the data. Wait a minute, I'm recording. Distance, 180,000 miles. Speed, 73,000 miles per second. Angle of trajectory, alpha 24 degrees. End of the data. Object identified as the satellite Dana. Satellite is completely safe. No intervention necessary. Proceed on present speed and trajectory. Satellite information now programmed. Distance, 180,000 miles. Speed, We're lucky. 73, we don't have to stop until... What do you angle, think of Alpha, Captain Hamilton? Don't you think he's a fascinating man? What the hell? What does it mean? Seems almost a message coming from space. Pate de foie gras. It seems hard to believe, but in only 20 more hours, we'll be on our way back to home base. Your move. Bravo, Marseille. All he thinks about is vacation. Captain. Our computer is picking up a strange signal. Here, sir, you better take a look at it. Thanks. It's impossible. The computer's got to be wrong. You understand, Colonel? Yes, sir. And you'll begin the investigation immediately. It will be done, sir. You know we can't allow this to continue. I will inform you. Report to me as soon as you have anything. Those damn signals, those damn signals are damaging Earth's radio and video systems. I'm receiving solicitations from all over the world. Washington and Moscow have already called me three times. Well, Colonel Altman, it's lucky for us that you're here. Yes, sir. Let's get down to facts. What disposition has Wiz given? Wiz affirms that behind this strange signal there's an alien intelligence that knows all, and there's danger. Wiz orders us to find the emission source and destroy it. Good. Send an airship at once. <laughs> You hear that? More of those signals. They certainly sound strange. Oh, come on, come on, relax. I agree that those are not normal signals, but I also think the computer isn't functioning right, that's all. So stay calm. I really think that that computer in there has just got to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> These strange signals could be radioactivity meeting a cosmic belt. And if these signals are really being sent and are not cosmic radiation, I figured they'll be strong enough to reach the ground. And I'll bet that they're being heard on every radio telescope on the entire Earth. Your move. What's the nearest spaceship to the emission source of the signals? It's the MK-31, Commander. MK-31. Who's the MK-31, Commander? Captain Hamilton. Hamilton? Fred Hamilton, the one on the Sirius expedition. The Mars incident? Intolerant of any kind of discipline. He should have been rejected. Captain Hamilton is a good commander. It's true that he has quite the temper and that he takes a little too much personal initiative. But I'm convinced that while these aspects are negative on Earth, they're very useful to a commander-in-chief of such a very important expedition. 
The MK-31 will have to move beyond known space. And Captain Hamilton is the most suitable man to do it. With your permission, I don't feel that Hamilton is right for the situation. Hamilton is to be discarded. Let me go, Commander. Stop this wrangling. Wiz will decide. Captain Hamilton will go and do what he'll be ordered to do. No, I haven't the right crew to undertake such a dangerous journey. We've just completed a mission lasting six months and are due for rotation in less than 24 hours. My men are tired. They need a rest. They want to get back to Earth and to their families. Evidently, I didn't make myself clear enough to you, Captain. I did not call you to debate. Wiz's orders must be carried out. Nonsense. If a machine says to go out and get killed, it does not mean I must do it. The new rules allow me to disobey such an order. I'm reserving decision. I'll report to you later. Consider your future, Captain Hamilton. Forget the new rules this time. You've got to obey, Captain. The commander here has helped you before. But now not even he can help you. He'll be unable to protect your career. If you persist in your refusal. Think it over, Captain. At the end of the mission, you'll all be given extra leave with the possibility of a very fine promotion. I'll be the first one to suggest it. You'll all be heroes. From our press room, you'll all be followed continuously by journalists from all over the world. Think it over. I'm sorry, Commander. No member of my crew wants to be a hero. And the normal leave is going to be fine without a promotion. And tell that hunk of metal that MK-31 is returning home. Captain Hamilton, I think Dr. Jane Fraser would like to speak with you. Hello, Fred. Hello, Jane Fraser. It's been a long time. I won't try to talk you into changing your mind. I only ask that you behave justly. Allow the crew to choose. It's the only democratic way I feel. That certainly does seem the fairest way to handle this. Doesn't it? <laughs> Hi, Richard. Hi. Gentle. You decide. It's strange how some printed words can evoke emotion. You live in a different world. Not a world of words, but of things that you cannot express. Mila, you're the one who's lost contact with life. You've let yourself be conditioned by machines. Sure, I know you're all able technicians, chemists, physicists, engineers, but no poets or musicians are born nowadays. And, and you've forgotten about uh, love. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think I'll never use the cosmic lab. You must never, never be fooled by imitations. You must kiss me more often from now on. You know something? I feel this is my first victory over machines. Captain, the radar scanner indicates two shining points. They're approaching rapidly. All crews to your stations. Establish contact with Base Orion. Tell Commander Armstrong it's urgent. Spaceship MK-31 has to speak with Commander Armstrong. It's urgent. Commander Armstrong's captain. What's happening, Captain? Our radar is picking up two strange metallic bodies. I presume they're spaceships. Spaceships in that part of space? They could be asteroids. They've got to be asteroids. No asteroids could vary their speed like that. They're being controlled somehow. Captain, try to find out what's happening. But remember, they're not terrestrial spaceships. That is, if they are spaceships. There's a way to get an answer to that. Activate the scanners. Executed. 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 The two objects are now in our cameras. They'll be on your base scanner momentarily. Transfer everything to base Orion. And they're really spaceships. There just isn't any other possibility. Establish contact. Negative contact. Hamilton, try again. Try with all possible ways of communications. Try with the radio, too. Wait, let us contact Wiz. He'll know what to do. Hala, interrupt contact with base. Mila, analyze the spaceship on our computer. Ask data about the crew and their weapons in terms of absolute probability. Data insufficient. In other words, we'll have to be content with a relative probability. Unmanned spaceships armed with long-range disintegrators. 70% chance. Battle speed. Battle speed. Activate disintegrators. Coordinate direction rays. Activate laser. Best range, 50 miles. Approaching range. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We've been hit. Internal pressure is five G's. Reactivate contact at once. Our equipment seems to be working perfectly, Commander. They must have stopped transmitting. Commander, the newspaper men are in the press hall. They followed everything. Commander, we've got a lot of questions to ask. On your plan to answer this attack against the Earth. What are you talking about? There's been no attack against our planet. We've all seen a spaceship. Do you think MK-31 has been hit as part of some weird game? Will you please stop misrepresenting facts? 
A space skirmish does not mean that Earth is in peril and that we've been attacked. That spaceship out there could have weapons. Our bases didn't sight anything that could make us dread an attack. Why have you already given the alert signal to all the bases? Well, because... Well, be quiet. That is a military secret. Yes, sir. The public must know about that ship. We may be facing the vanguard of a whole fleet. Damn, that's enough. Get out of here. I won't answer any more questions. Where's the whole Where's the whole communicator over here? The Earth is in danger. The Earth is in desperate, desperate danger. The whole atmosphere is very hard to prepare. Aliens attacking Earth. Our bases prepare defenses. Our bases can be destroyed by MK31. The ship enters the whole base. Orion's monitors. We have seen the beginning of the end. The Earth is in danger. Spaceship approaches Earth. I can't make it, Captain. The centrifugal force has immobilized me. We have to make it. Oh, maximum we can blow up the ship, Captain. We have to break clear. Push the auxiliary ignition button. Pump. Try to reach it, go on. Deactivate main generator. Captain, the B circuit in the main generator has been damaged and needs to be repaired. I want to know when it can be done. How are the auxiliaries? Normal course. Speed reduced to a fourth, only that. Captain, I can't reactivate contact with Earth. The auxiliary engines are too weak. They don't have sufficient power. Activate videos 14 and 7. And 17 and 6. Gravitational force is increasing fast. The angle's drift coincides with the planet's axis. We're being attracted by its gravitational force. We can't stop the fall. We'll be smashed to bits. Ask computer for force landing data. Insufficient energy available. Impossible to enter orbit at such high speed. Six minutes before impact. You must stop the descent instantly. Activate vaporizers. It's no good, Captain. There is not enough time left for that now. Activate vaporizers.
It's too late, Captain. We've had it. That vaporizer still can stop us. Captain, the spaceship's fall has stopped. Nice going. I should think that the computer has realized that by now. Now let's see if it can stabilize us. It's impossible. The spaceship is sustained by an anti-gravitation force of unknown origin. We're in the planet's orbit. At 500,000 feet. But it's against every physical law. How can there be a planet with a variable gravitation? <laughs> It's dark, cold, inhospitable. There are also craters. It almost looks as if the atmosphere is frozen. Shall we send a probe, Captain? No, I was thinking of landing on the planet. Jack, is the landing module in working condition? The module's working perfectly, Captain. And it'll be much easier to repair that faulty generator if we're on firm ground. All crew members to your stations. Prepare for landing. <laughs> Switch on videos two and three. Activate the monitors. Mila, analyze the external data. Oxygen, 15%. Azote, 70%. Atmosphere and gravity similar to Earth's. This zone of the planet will stay in shadow another 45 Earth days. The men in charge of space research get ready to leave in the module. The rest of you remain on board. My compliments, Captain. You're the first man to set foot on this planet. We're outcasts on a lost planet in space, but at last we have something firm under our feet. some wonderful opportunities for specimens. Do you think there's life here, Greta? I haven't noticed traces of water. Maybe the air's moisture allows the growth of primitive nuclei some form of life. This ground must be rich in iron and nickel. Take a look at this rock. Any radioactivity? No indication yet. 
Mila, look, this is organic. Find anything, Mila? No. You? It's a growth of some kind. Interesting. I wonder what it is. It's similar to lichen back on Earth, but not identical. I'll analyze it later. Something 
Stay where you are. Now we're going to split up into two groups. I want no heroes. We'll find him. All right, let's see. You right here. All of you go with me. The rest of you go in that direction. Okay, let's go. And don't lose sight of each other. I think I saw him go towards those rocks. Disappeared from one place and appeared in another. Captain, I don't get it. Look, this is no natural phenomenon. What's unnatural is a sphere like this, here, among these rocks. It's all the work of a fiend. The same fiend that killed that Tyrus. Wait a second. Where's Greta? She was with us when we started out. I gave orders for us to stick together. But she's not here. You're right, damn it. Captain, you know what happened to Jack. The same thing could have happened to Greta. That we can find out. Am I coming through? Our reception here is very good, sir. What's going on? Look, Jack's been murdered. And we've been materialized in this cave. Greta's missing. Have you heard from her? No. We know nothing. But if you can't find her, maybe you'd better come back to the ship. The technicians checking the damage have reached positive results. Maybe you're right. Max got a point, Captain. Let's get out of here and go back to the ship. No. With Jack murdered and Greta missing, we can't leave. We've got to try to find her. Calm down, Richard. There's nothing we can do for them. And maybe Greta's waiting for us outside. <laughs> Check your apparatus. Captain, the sending station is in here, in this cave. Their signals, addressed only to us. They originate here. An inert rock that transmits signals from Earth. This sphere is the sending station. Our quartz crystals have this property, but they have to be activated. Anyway, the power in ours is limited. There's some kind of message. Yes, and I think it's directed toward us. It seems a little clear. 
someone is near us. I'm almost sure there is. That's crazy. There's no one in here. We've got to keep checking. We've got to find out who or what's sending that message. The signals feel stronger to me. Hello, Control. Record everything you see here. The videotape's running already. Those strange signals are so baffling. Let me know if you need the rest of the crew. Okay. Let's look around. Reaches the mind. Hey, how does that guy know our language? Shut up, Richard. It's us. Our brainwaves make the telepathy become sound. My race was great once. The machines served men, and my people were happy. Then the huge machines stole the command from me, and we became slaves. All this before the great explosion. I am talking about an atomic catastrophe. Its survivors, as you see, have regressed to an animal state. Strangers, Amak knows why you have come to this planet. I think we've got to do something. We will. Captain! Captain, can you hear me? Maybe they don't know about the rest of us. We can attack them from the rear. It'd be simple to do, sir. We can use the disintegrator guns. Don't worry about us. Repair the generator. I am Itor, chief of my people. You killed one of my men. Why? No. The immortal monster has killed your companion. Many of us have died. The Black Peril kills all those who dare to go out of the caves. We cannot do a thing against him. We can only hide in the innermost recesses of the planet. Listen, I think they're sincere. And if we help them, sir, I think it could be the answer to all our problems. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We'd like to help you fight your enemy. Can you tell us where he is? Sage, Amak says that in the Shining Cave, there's the monster. Amak recounts that the great death came from him. The monster hates any people and kills them without pity. This race was once a great civilization in every way. This city still seems to be alive, and who knows how long it's been abandoned. Let's go, Captain. The radioactivity is reaching dangerous levels. It's too dangerous, Captain, for us here. The city's an atomic stockpile. The radioactivity is continuing to rise. Let's get out of here, Captain. I've established the signal's location. The message comes continually from a mysterious source and is retransmitted by the sphere. Uh, it's not enough. We've got to go back to the ship and consult the computer. 
Itor, we can destroy the enemy, but we have to go back to the ship first. No. We have no choice. Itor, the weapons we need are on board, and we can't do without them. The woman will stay with us. There's no alternative, Mila. We'll have to trust them. Whatever happens, I love you. I'll be okay now. Go to the ship. As you heard, Wiz is positive that of prime importance is Earth's defense. On the other hand, the unknown spaceships have not signaled on our radars, and the other signal from space has also ceased, and it could very well be a trap. We can't risk it. All Earth's bases are on alert. Wiz's decision is the best. Captain, we found him. I'll be right there. Commander Armstrong, from Cola Space, they communicate that the sector HF203 is refracting the passage of any kind of wave. The ship could have landed there. That zone is totally isolated. It's only a polar ice field with no interest. Unless vicinity of the pole has provoked some magnetic joke with Kola's instruments. Ask Kola's base to verify all the instruments and to act accordingly. I want any and all data sent here to Orion at once. Yes, sir. Pay attention, please. Finally, they read the list, know something. Did you locate the ship, Captain? Oh, Did you? I believe so. The enemy spaceship should be in the Arctic. The situation is under control. I'm sorry for the headlines you had in mind, but Earth is not in any danger. Didn't buy it. No. What will you think of? I'll think of you and me back on Earth. That's what I always do, my darling. Enemy is a 
computer. The images you see are materializations of its energy. To destroy it, press button for its elimination. Probable color, red. We've stuffed a ton of information in this gadget. And the only answer we get is probable or possible. I want a reliable answer. No certainty possible. Index of probability, 50%. I belong to Glasgow, dear old Glasgow town. There's something the matter with Glasgow, for it's going down and round. I'm only a common old working chap, as anyone here can see. But when I get a couple of drinks on Saturday, Glasgow belongs. <laughs> You weren't worried, were you, Mila? Just a little. I knew you'd come for me. And I'm glad you brought another spacesuit. The radiation in that city is deadly. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Captain, I'm getting all kinds of electronic signals. The meat is starting to go crazy. I don't understand it. Mila, stay here with Wright. Holden, you're coming with me. Yes, Captain. for a purpose. What is it? I will respond, Earthling. Once long ago, the inhabitants of this planet constructed perfect machines. The machines performed all the work for them. The inhabitants of the planet were happy. Their only function was to control these machines. But even though this was their only function, it became a chore. So man built me so that I might control the machines and be able to construct new ones, thereby inheriting all of man's abdicated responsibilities. One day, the planet was attacked by alien forces. 
All the machines were destroyed. The inhabitants regressed rapidly. I became the only one with the knowledge to construct new machines. And now I am able to construct them myself. I will make these machines invincible. Then I will be able to conquer the galaxy. You must help me to replace some of my circuits that were damaged by the alien forces. Without all of my circuits functioning, some of my memory banks are blocked. The inhabitants here do not have the intelligence to be utilized anymore. For that reason, I have summoned you. Why did you attack us with the two ships? You could have destroyed your only means of help. I only wanted to neutralize your engines. After that, I pulled you to the planet with my energy source. Where did you get this energy from? To send messages to other galaxies and to amuse yourself keeping the dead city alive? I control the lives and the brains of all the inhabitants here. I keep them alive as I see fit. Just as a shepherd controls the sheep, and then at any moment shears the sheep. Enough now with explanations. I will indicate to you which burned out circuits must be replaced. We must destroy it. We'll take our time repairing it. We've got to find that red button. My beam will indicate the components, Earthlings. He seems to enjoy calling us Earthlings. He says it with such scorn. Bring that circuit component over here. will be destroyed. What the hell are you doing? I have an idea. Give me a belt. Do you know what you're doing? About David and Goliath? Who? It doesn't matter. If we make it, I'll tell you the whole story.
Kola base communicates a strong explosion in the sector HF203, and the zone is not isolated any longer. The radar sentries report that no flying objects have left Earth's orbit, while an aviation scout has seen large metal segments scattered here and there on the ice field. Call a press conference. Give them press release number two, that we've isolated and destroyed the enemy spaceship. And you can burn the other messages. Okay, Commander. No. Marseille is a nickname. In the Valley of the Rhone, you don't have megalopoli, but only small towns. Montpellier, Arles, Marseille. My grandparents came from Marseille, and that's how I got my nickname, Marseille. Cutlets or villageois. <laughs> but the bechamel is very good. <laughs> Look, Marseille. It's Mac. How did he get here? Let's bring him in. Give me a hand. We'll get him to the dispensary. Easy. Oh, great. What did it? She's hurt. Infirmary, but we have to get back to the bridge. Yes? Will you send someone down to take over? Don't worry, I'll come down myself. Jeez. It's too much initially. That generator might not be able to take it. I said maximum, Segura. We might blow up. We'll blow up if we stay here. The generator isn't all the way up yet. I said full power, Segura. Sir, it's impossible until the generator... Stop up. giving the excuses and do it. Here I am. Uh, I'm okay now. I'll take over, Segura. Give me more on the starboard engines. Increase power. More power. with Earth. It's the 
missing ship, Commander. They're reporting in. They seem to be all right. Prepare yourself for a big surprise. Captain, we did not behave well toward you. Wizards told us you had one chance in a thousand to make it. And so, frankly, we had given you up for lost. I agree with you. That machines can be wrong, and we're very happy to see you. Carry on. Continue to delegate all your decisions to the machines, and man will continue to prove that his brain is still superior. As I said, prepare yourselves for a big surprise. You'll soon be seeing one of the inhabitants of the planet you sent us to. I'll give you a full report when we reach the base. Here's our guest. He looks terrific. He seems like one of us. I am happy to welcome the newest member of the crew. Hey, Captain, he's automatically an officer in that uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Take him to the doctor for a checkup, will you? He certainly looks okay to me. Etor, let's go. Captain, I, I need some rest. I'm tired. Oh, by all means. Now everything's all right. You, uh, you can sleep for two days if you like. Press coordination with Base Orion. Give data to the computer. with Earth is interrupted again. Captain, perhaps in the corridor. Better check the computer. Breakdown due to sabotage. Activate interior video one and the emergency generator. Decide what's needed or not. Red alert. Stop Greta. Captain, she's here. We found her. Oh, 
that blood. There was so much blood. <laughs> Everybody out! Come on! <laughs> Quick, activate all locking devices. <laughs> Mila, you can't do anything for Etor. Shall I get her, Captain? No, hold it. I know how to get rid of that monster. You stay here at the control console. Open the door. Mila, you've got to get out of here. Come on. Come on. I have a little surprise for the youngest member of your crew. Peter, there's your baby. Oh, oh. it's your baby. It's lovely. It's mine. It's mine. I can't believe it. Look. What a darling baby. Ask that hunk of metal if we're on the right course and how long it'll take us to arrive. Little delicate. Direction, course, exact. Estimated time of touchdown, 30 hours, Earthlings. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Thank <laughs> you. 